Great. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Mariana Ramirez, and I am the director of the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art here at Portland State University. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for our panel conversation. For those of you here in Portland, I hope you've had the opportunity to view the exhibition Mundos Posibles, Possible Worlds, featuring artist Nuria Montiel. Oh, you know what, everyone, let's take a minute. Um, I'm getting messages that people aren't able to get in yet, um, or people are still getting in. It's open. People are just okay. It's open. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that. A um, little bit of time, but uh, they seem to be here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Well, welcome, everyone. Again, my name is Mariana Ramirez, and I am the director here at the JSMA. Tonight, we'll have the opportunity to hear from Nuria, who is joining us from Mexico City, along with two local artists who collaborated with Nuria on works in the exhibition Alejandra Arias Sevilla and V. Maldonado. The exhibition's curator, Alberto McCulligan Hernandez, approached me with this idea for the exhibition almost three years ago, shortly after I started my role at the JSMA. And while I was still developing our museum's mission, I recognized that Nuria's artwork and Alberto's scholarship fit into the vision for my vision for the museum. I can tell you now that one of my goals for our museum is that visitors see themselves reflected in some way in our exhibitions and have the opportunity to learn a new perspective. In addition to Mundos Posibles, we also have on view a question of who the narrative art of Hung Lu from the collections of Jordan D. Schnitzer and his family foundation. I'm delighted that both of our exhibitions this year share stories, ideas, and histories through beautiful artwork. Both exhibitions will be on view for two more weeks through December 2nd. I would like to thank the Jackson Foundation, the Richard and Helen Phillips Charitable Fund, Robert and Catherine Gamlin, and the JSMA Exhibition Circle for supporting the exhibition and tonight's event, as well as the Federico Sevilla Sierra Printmaking Residency at Malawi Printing, made possible by the Arias Sevilla Charitable Fund and Nike Community Impact Fund for supporting new work in the exhibition. In addition, I am incredibly grateful to Kat Richards and Candice Bancari for organizing and leading workshops this week with our PSU students. We'll hear a bit more about that later in the talk, but one of the highlights of this exhibition is a collaborative art piece between Nuria's students in Mexico and our Portland State University students. After our virtual talk, for those of you in Portland, Alberto, Alejandra, V, and I will be in the galleries greeting people. I'd also like, I'd now like to introduce the exhibition's curator, Alberto McElligan Hernandez. He is an assistant professor of art history in the School of Art and Design at Portland State. His research on Mexican feminist artists has appeared in Nerica, an art history journal published by the Universidad Ibero uh, Iberoamericana and in the Journal of International Women's Studies. He has also published an essay on Mexican women artists in Portal, the art magazine of the Portland Art Museum. He curated Monica Meyer Translocal Translations for the Paragon Gallery in Portland. Alberto, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Mariana, for that lovely introduction. And thank you, V, Nuria, Alejandra, for being part of this conversation. And additionally, I wanted to also again thank Kat Richards from PSU School of Art and Design for helping with all of these workshops that took place. And also everyone at the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art for working above and beyond the call of duty to make sure that this international transnational project all came together in particular, um, not only Candace, which you mentioned, Mariana, but also Kathleen Murney. So today, as part of the conversation, I thought it would be great just to give you a little bit of the historical political context that frames understanding of Nuria's work. I've explored how is it that her work really looks at the expansive potential of printmaking, not only in Mexico, but in all of this different international context. And I think this really resonates with the history of political print Mexico more generally. And this is a history that very much has to do with the immense transformations that took place in the 20th century in Mexico. If you're familiar with some of the history, 
we really have to think of Mexico as a relatively young nation, since really the present day political order can all be traced back to the Mexican Revolution of the early 20th century. The revolution was a reaction and attempt to dismantle the horrifying forms of abuse that were part of the dictatorship of Porfirio Diaz, a period known by as a Porfiriato to Mexican scholars and historians. And as you can see in some of these photographs that show the visual culture of the Porfiriato, really the political and social structures that were most admired were those that emulated Western European examples. So you see Mexico City very much with the broad boulevards associated with Paris, the Palace of Fine Arts in the lower right corner, very much purposefully emulating the Beaux-Arts architecture of Paris. Here you see Porfirio Diaz and members of his whole political elite canoodling with foreign dignitaries, very much showing the kind of emphasis his administration placed on foreign investment, industrial development, without really thinking about political participation of the everyday person in Mexican society which the vast majority of the population at the time was really living in con conditions that could charitably be called feudalism without political representation or political participation, no kind of protections. There were brutal attempts of creating some kind of protection for workers throughout this period, but Porfirio Diaz very much stifled his efforts throughout the Porfiriato. All of this exploding, leading to the leadership of these different charismatic leaders known as the Caudillos. And here showing you photographs of two of the most iconic ones, um, Emiliano Zapata, Pancho Villa, which rallied the masses that wanted to create a new world, a new country, a new life for all the masses in Mexico. And so this idea of the revolution is finally given an opportunity for the vast majority of the rural population of the country to participate in the political process is something that was very much expressed in the visual arts, leading to this very famous example of how is it that politics and art come together, the Mexican muralist movement. So here showing you a few examples of this massive large scale projects developed by artists such as Diego Rivera. Here showing you images of his murals at the National Palace in Mexico. Here showing you another work by another iconic Mexican muralist, Jose Clemente Orozco. And this vision of what the revolution was and what the future of Mexico could be is very much considered the cornerstone of political art in Mexico, where even over a hundred years later, political artists in Mexico are always thought or read through this lens of what political art used to be after the revolution. And it wasn't just the murals, but it was really this whole idea of political printmaking and the ability to reproduce images, to create inexpensive images that could be shared among different numbers of people is something that a lot of artists use to their advantage, such as Jose Clemente Orozco, which was emulating a lot of the images he was using in his murals. And we have even the establishment of all of these different artist collectives that were trying to use political printmaking to its full advantage. The Taller de Grafica Popular or the People's Graphic Workshop was this project that continued for several decades in which artists could come in and create startling images that denounce capitalist exploitation, fascism, the exploitation of the downtrodden. As all of this was going on, you might think how all of this is celebrating the revolution and how the post-revolutionary regime then was acting on all of this idealism and this hope for the masses. The reality was that the political establishment was not living up to this lofty ideals. And this very much came to a head in 1960s Mexico, when just in anticipation of the Summer Olympics of 1968, in which Mexico was going to be the first third world nation to host the Olympics, we had this mass student movement exploding all over Mexico City with hundreds of high school students, college students, demanding changes to the political structures of the country. And so many of them congregated in this iconic plaza in Mexico City, Tlatelolco. And given that the Mexican government was extremely anxious about what is it that international journalists and international observers could say about this mass student movement, they made the horrifying decisions to send the army 
to attack the students in what came to be known as the Tlatelolco massacre of the 2nd of October. So here showing you a few images of the aftermath. It's still difficult to know the total number of deaths, but this moment in which the army attacked the students has become this defining symbol of activism in Mexico and the horrifying forms of repression that can act against it. And so here showing you a few examples of the kind of print culture that emerged with those student movements. One of the institutions in Mexico, the Museo Universitario Arte Contemporáneo, has been really key in documenting a lot of these materials that were meant to be ephemeral voices of protest. A lot of the phrases used in this graphic arts examples are still very much repeatedly deployed by activists in Mexico, specifically this iconic image of the dove being pierced by a weapon. You'll see it actually today in the exhibition. One of the works produced by Nuria makes a very direct reference to this symbol. And so all of this history of political art and political printmaking is very much the background that Nuria Montiel is negotiating in her work. So when I first encountered this project that she developed, the mobile press, I thought it was a fascinating example of how is it that contemporary arts deal with present day situations, even when they're continuing a dialogue between artists of different generations. So I thought it would be great to just hear more from Nuria and some of the other artists that collaborated with her about the mobile press and some of these other projects she's developed. So sorry to speed walk through 100 years of Mexican history and art. Thank you so much, Alberto. I think it, you gave a great context to understand like the tradition of printmaking in Mexico that is pretty strong and is still going on. And so talking about La Imprenta Móvil, uh, I started to work with this project in 2009, but the, probably the most um, intense moment was in 2010. Like there is a patrol somewhere there that give us this <laughs> sound, sorry about that. So. Uh, so basically during those, at, at the beginning, these first photographs that Alberto uh, prepared for us of the documentation of the early years of La Imprenta Mobile, um, I was basically trying to put the press on the streets as a tool to start a conversation with people who are there, you know, in the public space because they sell something, because they enjoy to be in the streets because they work doing other stuff or because like they are skaters. So I was like basically interested in how so many urban tribes use the public space as a as as a place to gather and and to stay together. No, so I wanted to basically collect these like urban voices, and that was the beginning. <laughs> um yeah <laughs> so that was the very beginning um and I was asking people to just make a drawing because I didn't know exactly how if people really will like participate or not and I was using CDs as a surface to make dry points because I took inspiration from like People who sell stuff in the streets in Mexico, they are very common, like flea markets or like different type of vendors who sell like, you know, food, but also music or films or clothes. Um, so basically the, the CD that nowadays we don't use it anymore, but during those days we still uh, used to use it to basically exchange music or, or, or films, it seems like a good like uh, matrix to, to just start the game. So that was the very beginning and I was collecting everything. Could be, you could, I was just inviting people to make a drawing. So I collected like many of them. I did a first piece with that, but um, basically Mexico in 2010, started, I mean, at least like the awareness of the citizens about what was the disappearing of people was 
like the numbers were increasing, but the names were totally forgotten. And the government was like basically saying that people that was missing, it was because they were bad people, drug dealers and stuff like that. So it was very like, you know, um, obscure the situation. And, and in that moment, I was like, maybe in my thir late 20s, probably beginning of my 30s, living in Mexico City. And I really wanted to know what was going on in my country. Before La Imprenta Mobile, I did a, 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 like my first um, artist book after school, after my undergrad studies, that it was like a travel, like a, a, the book, an artist book that I did in the truck of my car. And I was traveling with all the stuff that you could need to make like etching, silo screens, um, um, aqua tins. And I was stopping by different towns and doing drawings and printing. And it was a very lonely like project, like traveling by my own, visiting, of course, like printmakers. But the result, it was my own perspective, my romantic traveling experience. So after that, I felt that I, I, I really enjoy the idea of putting the press outside of the, of the printing workshop. And so use the, the print, the press as a tool to make, like to travel and visit other places. And use it also as a possibility to encounter with other artists or with, people that is just there in the public space. But what it changed, it was the need to use the press as a vehicle to start a, a conversation, no? So La Imprenta Mobile, at this very beginning, as I told you, I didn't know exactly uh, what kind of, what will be the participation of the audience, but because the situation of the country was like getting more and more complicated, and then, like looking back to all the Mexican, and I mean, it's not just in Mexico, also in other parts of the world, the relationship with printmaking and social struggles. It was a, like, you know, like an, an important axis to consider in the project, no? And then I was like, okay, that's, that seems like the, the, the way to, to do it, to use the, the Imprenta Mobile, as with this tradition of like printing demands and needs of the citizens to understand which is the situation that we are living, not just in Mexico City, you know, because Mexico City, it was a bubble. And even I was living in a very like middle-class neighborhood, even that I was trying to move in the press to different parks I was still in, 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 the, in the downtown area. And so it, it was very different, the situation of people who was living or is living today in close to the border with the, the United States or close to the border with, the, with Guatemala or very different completely the people who lives in Veracruz and Michoacán. Uh, like, so, the Imprenta Mobile basically gave me the possibility to, to travel, to follow um, activists that basically were um, mothers and fathers who had like, like relatives that were disappeared and they didn't know where they were and what happened to them. So uh, it was very like intense and, and sad it, and it, and it's sad that it's still going on, that there hasn't been a really solution of it. And we are still struggling with the, with the crisis of like guns, drugs, which are illegal and maybe they shouldn't be, and, and migration and, you know, all these like tensions between our territories, no? So, so with La Imprenta Mobile, I started in 2010, 2011 to follow La Caravana del Movimiento por la Paz, that it was like done with this activist of relatives of like missing people. And we were stopping in so many different towns. And, and it was great because during the, the 
activist context, people will really, uh, like I was telling them, would you like to print something about your situation of nowadays, how is your present life, what is going on here? And people really like started to participate and even like the activists that we were traveling, traveling with, like some of them were like uh, journalists, others were filmmakers, they were also people doing radio, very young, like students from like different like um, disciplines and also migrants that were like using also the, the the protest to be able to cross like the territory in a on an umbrella of, of security, not feeling so like vulnerable to the situation of violence that they had to confront all the time. So like during all these like months, I we were a team. Like La Imprenta Mobile, it wasn't myself. We were a team of many who were like changing and they were helping me to move the press, to prepare the ink, you know, everything. And then we will have like people, different people, some of them, as I say, people who have been like touched directly by this conflict and violence and other who were just passing through and like that. And all the prints that we were doing like these words, these demands, um, we were pasting them also with with paste on the walls of the of the towns and cities that we were visiting, as a kind of trace, no, of, of all that. And so this picture that uh, you can see now, um, it's the collection is the first like um, wallpaper that I did during a residency in New York City just after those um, like months. It was almost like a year or a little bit longer, more than a year, like traveling with these different groups of activists. And so after that, I was really, you know, also like exhausted, uh, not only like the body, but also like the mind, you know, like being uh, hearing so many cruel things and horrible things going on and, and so I had the chance to go to New York and for me it was like interesting to hear what people could say about this in the other side of the world. And they, how would they read what people was demanding and claiming, no? Because at, at the end, um, the situation that we are living still now in Mexico, it's, a, it's of course something that it's about also about our geographic position between South, Central America, and North America, and all the things that and people who are moving from North to South, you no, know, and all the complex stuff that is going on in terms of legal um, stuff, illegal people who need to move because the situation where they live is just impossible the drug uh, market in the north. So I wanted to hear not the news, like the media, mass media messages that we always hear, no? But what was the thoughts of people there? So I did this first exercise of like putting all the, I photocopied all the demands that I had collected during till, the, till that moment. And I would paste them uh, on the wall and and I was also printing you can see a little press there that it was uh, my like the one because I couldn't travel with the big one that I've done that I did in in Mexico City it didn't have much like, I mean it didn't make sense to to move such a huge part and I had the chance to build one there with some friends and I could put like some homages to the Black Panthers who I really admire also in this like tradition of printmaking and social movements. And so while I was also printing there, I, we had the wall paper there so people could also like respond to that. Um, and we can see the next one. And I think it's important to see this piece because when we, at the beginning where Alberto and I we were discussing about which pieces we will show, 
in the very beginning, we thought about this version of the Todas las Voces, but then we decided to, to make some changes also because of, of the relationship with Ale and the Moloni printers and the possibilities that we could do there. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. So this photo, it's in Portland. In the summertime, I really had a, such an amazing, amazing experience. And I have to say thank you to Alberto, to Ale, to Paul, to Henry, to like V, Estelo, and all the people who really like make my life so uh, joyful there. And so the photograph that, that we are looking at, basically, I didn't travel with a cart. And I also decided that we didn't need, di we didn't have the need to build a new car. That in fact, fact could be interesting to search for a press there and to use the letters that Ale very generously lent me and also the ones that were at the Muloni uh, company. And I think this was amazing because when I think, I mean, I love to travel. That's something very important in my life. I feel that, that when you move from one territory to, to another one, you change of culture, you are like out of your daily life and you're like, how do you say, like your commodities. No, you don't say like that. Well, when you are out of your house and things change so much, you're more aware of everything and also many things like that you thought that were like, like just the way you learn you realize that it's not, that it was a completely social construction and you can see other people doing crazy and amazing stuff in ways that you couldn't imagine. But the other thing is that when you travel a lot, if you travel with a lot of weight, it's just impossible to move. No, then it's like really suffering with your huge bag full of stuff. So I feel that when you are a, a nomad, or even if you move uh, by your own desire or because you need to, uh, to travel light is the best way to do it. And now that even like flying with weight, it's more complicated, but also because then the press that you, that I mean, the press that I use there has its own history and the letters that we use there also, they have their own histories. So in this sense, I think it's very important to, to, to name this because uh, one amazing stuff was like this, uh, the encounter that Ali and I had and, and the letters were, were like the type collection it was something very important and we did talk about it in many ways and all the histories with Ale and her grandfather letter press that he used to press like film posters with those letters and I, my family my father my grandfather they were into filmmaking so it was like wow how like letters can make these connections but also like it now in in Mexico like doing the printings with my students. I went to a very small letterpress shop here in Puebla, where I'm living now. And it was also great to see the collection there, you know? and all the stories that could be behind those specific letters and symbols, and that they at the end speaks of what was printed with them, but also where, about territories, people. And so I feel that just with a letter, you can have so many histories behind, which I think it's great. So in the photos, you are looking like basically when I arrived, uh, Ale and I, we installed the, like the print mobile press. First, we did few experiments in Alberta, a market, and just, you know, to warm up and uh, start our friendship and see how could we work together and then um, Estelo opened uh, its doors and I have the encounter with B that is uh, also here B and I think that was a great moment because during that mo that uh, event uh, they were having a show about Latinx artists in Portland 
So it also makes a lot of sense, you know, for me as being in a Mexican and also think about my own culture when it moves and you move to the United States. I lived in the North for not too long, but like three years. But having like this conversation of what happened with your own culture when you moved, when you were a very, very like a kid, and then what happens with language, and then um, identity. So there were many like things that we need to talk about still, yeah. no? To understand ourselves. And so here, we basically invited people and the words, I always, when I'm working with the mobile press in the streets um, to gather um, the, the words that I'm collecting, I'm, try, I'm trying to ask questions about the topics that I would like to learn you know, from others. So in the, at the very beginning, I told you they were just drawings, then like amazing drawings, but I didn't have a specific thing, like, question for the public. During the protest um, years, it was more obvious because it was like responding to a problem, to a huge event, like and dramatic things that were going on. So that was there. But after that, that I continue working with the printing, the mobile press, um, I was also like trying, and I think there are questions that I still have that is like sometimes like like in your daily life, how can you also uh, do things that could have like impact or even symbolic like transformations for a better future or for a, to imagine like utopia still can be possible that nowadays seems that it's even more difficult and with all the wars still going on, it seems like humans we don't understand. But still, I feel that we need us as artists to think that like a better future is possible. And so naming those things that are relevant or are important, even that they are symbolic or if they come in a privileged context or if they come in a Event, moment that you don't even like imagine it are quite important. So I was asking like things about the future, about how could we survive in this moment if we would imagine that the, we will have another pandemic crisis or if we could imagine life without borders or if like, and stuff like that. And people will come and just write one word and then we will be adding words and we will print, and then we, someone will take one word and we will add other. And something that it was also great during the Muloni residency, it was that I had the chance to, to mix with Ale the street like experience of collecting voices in the streets, but also to work at the printing workshop. So I feel that this mix, it was amazing for me because it's also good to go back indoors and basically like think about all the stuff that is going on in the streets that could be more like explosive and and you don't improvising a lot you don't control everything so here you are looking at the the collage that uh, we ended up doing as the final piece with all the words collected during those days in Portland. And also with like monoprint that it was my first relationship with a, an amazing press that Ale can explain better how it works. But basically when I arrived, it was a possibility to do something with that press. And monotype was a good way to use it because it's, um, you know, like, it's like painting, it's very direct. It's, it's like in contrast with other, printing techniques where you have to prepare the plate, you have to do many cook steps before. The, the monoprint allows you to really improvise and draw and paint and directly print. So nowadays, like in my present life, gardens have been important in my life. I think for all of us, no? Like during the pandemic, 
and lockdown um, years, uh, gardens were our utopian space where we could go out of loneliness and we could even with our dog and all the clothes on and everything, but we could say a friend, let's meet in the park, let's meet in the garden. Children could have that kind of school in these bubbles in gardens. So through like thinking in gardens, I started to study a little bit the relationship with artists and gardens. And I have a lot of friends that are involved in those kind of projects of like growing stuff and caring about trees and flowers. And, and like I've been experimenting a lot with dyeing, like, you know, with like uh, natural dyes and so when I arrived to Portland, it was amazing to see all these green areas that we have in the public space. And maybe in winter is different. They told me that it's more like vampire feeling. But during the summertime, it was beautiful. So for me, I love walk, no? Like when I'm new in a place, I just walk around. So during my first walks, I was growing and taking pictures of the all the flora that was all around those beautiful like trees, but also those rose gardens that you have that suddenly you are like, wow, this perfume, what is going on? And suddenly you have those flowers beautifully there. So that let like that makes me feel that there's a future possible, no? When you have like the relationship with nature and the forest. And also with V, I mean that was amazing V because we we went like I wanted to visit the woods and be runs uh, every day into the woods and talking in the Stello encounter uh, they told me about it and V and I went together to to have a, a walk in the woods and also I think that has a huge impact in uh, in the print itself no like the idea of also collecting the, these fragmentations of of nature with the words that were collected not just in the in with the press in the streets in these moments where i had the public participation but also um, i allowed myself to be, be more playful and allowed like fragments of songs appeared or maybe we were eating in the lunch in the printing shop and suddenly Paul will say something amazing about Buddhism and nudism and I will put it there or I was reading like something about like Latinx, queer theory, feminism and I will allow myself to also add those words because they were part of the conversations that we were having, no? Also, I mean the relationship of people living in the uh, in the streets and the homeless crisis appear there. Like for me, that I, when I was in Chicago, I think it wasn't so um, true that it, that it, as it is today. So that was also important for me to, to think about, no? Uh, in terms of what I say, the crisis, the social crisis that we have in this size, side of the world, but also the social crisis that, you have in the north, no? So those things appear maybe more in a concrete poet way. And, but at the end, it's a map, no? At the end, I think it's a map. So that's why we also added the geometric forms because it reminds you in a way blocks and like corners and buildings and houses and stuff like that. <laughs> And well, here is the little press of Molone printing that we use it to print some of the letter press. Uh, the first ones that were little, we use it. And I think it's a good symbol to have it there as, a, as an artifact that also speaks about all the like history of, print, of printmaking. So I think it, like the object itself it has so many things that means, for me at least. And then you have in the 
like vivos se los llevaron, si nos tocan a uno, nos tocan a todos. That one is, we call it rastro de todas las voces, because it's a second iteration of the first uh, wheat paste um, wall that you saw that I did in New York City. And that, as I mentioned, at first we were going to do that one, but at the end being in, in, in Portland land and looking and learning from the photographer's technique, I mean, I was like, wow, could we do that? I mean, could we do from the photos that I took with, my, with a very small camera during the protest, traveling in, the, in Mexican territories and like, could we, bring back those images that were spread into social media, more like into Facebook, because that was the one that we were using in those years more than Instagram. And so for me, like, and I was very happy that Paul and Henry and Ale said, yes, let's do it. And it makes sense. It makes sense in relationship of also graphic in like, in public space, no? all the stickers that you see with pasted there, I mean, all the information that is already in the walls of our like towns, cities, places that public spaces. So for me, it was like the possibility to use the photographer to look back into the archive of the mobile printing press and bring it like back to the present. So Ale did all the work like doing the photographers, all the like the, the chemical process and the printing process. And like, I'm so happy to, to, to see them there. No, I really think uh, for me, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. and, and the words, there, they were few of those words that I felt most important or they or that they collect the general ones. I mean, there were many that were similar but different. So I chose some of those demands and we painted them on the wall. And I think that was also a great uh, match because I mean, I want V and Ale to speak about the process. I think it will be great to open the mic for them because they were part of the process of doing this piece, to producing this piece. So if you would like to say something, please, it's the moment. <laughs> Thank you, Noria. Um, yeah, it was such a beautiful collaboration. And you know, prior to Noria arriving, we had many conversations and a very beautiful, we nourished a friendship and a collab collaborative spirit. Um, of course, I met Nuria as a printer. And then after we were working in Murmurai, it became more of a collaboration with both of our family histories, the conversations that we were leading, how we were engaging with the public, how we were engaging with our context, our history that we're living in now, but also family history. And it evolved into a really beautiful conversation and collaboration. Um, as a printer working with uh, these images that Nuria had created to make the photograph years, I felt it was so important to, um, she showed, well, it started out with, she showed me a lot of these photographs that she had documenting all those years of activism and printing in the public scene in interventions. And, uh, and after showing her other prints that we, we have done with Photogravier, it made sense to use Photogravier to give them another life uh, or another context and bring them back into paper. There's so many translations that happen with print, right? You have uh, something like this will be the original uh, photograph. And then there's many translations that happen to that photograph, to a negative, into an emotion that gets then put onto a plate and then it gets etched with acid. There's so many little things that either get lost or you get even more details out of it. And I think those translations speak to, you know, the history and the context of today of how it was made and the history of the process itself. And it adds so much more context to uh, the image that we're looking at, right? And the possibilities that you can get out of it with a photograph here. Um, you can be, you can just print us so much and also, you know, we paste it back into the street. There's a lot of possibilities of that. and. 
And what print does truly is being able to, you know, reproduce and have multiples of them and how they can live in different spaces, different areas, different walls. It can be a, a wall, like a white cube, or it can be in the street. And that possibility felt really important and significant as what we see in those photographs still retain so much value and these conversations continue to happen um, and today. So yeah, it was very exciting to work with you, Nuria. Um, I felt like you trusted me with, you know, these are very intimate shots of what people, you know, people's stories, people's truths. Um, so it felt really exciting and also tender to, to make the photograph yours and, and print them. Thank you so much, Ale. Would you like me to, to say something about the process of painting, the, also all the words in this case, um, the demands done with during those years, 2010, but also the other piece, the wonder words, which is more like codification of text is difficult to read. I mean, there, there is more an intention of not being so straightforward as the social de demand is. In this case, I wanted to be more like um, that the words wouldn't be so easy to read, that you had to stay like fighting to learn how to read it because the words can be hidden there. So, and as you see, it's one large print that it was with pasted by Ale also as an amazing, uh, like, technical encounter because I arrived with my prints that they are old now and they are getting old also. So I remember that they went, they were exposed in an exhibition in New York City and they went, when they come back, they had some wrinkles and they were not like, they were posters that were like separate. So when I arrived to Moloni, we unpacked them and, and they were like, no, don't worry about the wrinkles. You can restore that. But mm -hmm. also, and I'm looking what they were doing, I was like, could we like make it just one large? piece of sheet and I think that this piece really grow a lot because we put together two so you have like a layering of paper and then also it became like a very large print and that really changes and then you have the letters also painted directly on the wall as a way to expand the print into the wall but also thinking about like in the streets where you have like science, politics, in Mexico with or graffiti, no? So all that, that relationship of street uh, painting or graffiti or political stuff or music cartels done directly with paint and then with the prints that go on top of that. So we paint. And, and it was great because I think I'm not a painter, to be honest. So I, I didn't uh, have like so many, I was like, just look at the digital image and then paint it there, no? And I had tried this before in New York, so I was like, yeah, you paint it. But then we started the conversation about, but how would you like it? Would you like it with a very like, a digital and flat thing, or would you like to have the gesture of the painter? So tell us me a little bit about your process. I would love to hear you. Well, first of all, Nuria, thank you so much for inviting me to work with you. I you know, I love you with all my heart, having you here in Portland in the summer and getting to work with you and Ale and all the team. It's such a blessing. Thank you, friend, de veras. Um, yeah. And it was a real pleasure working with the team here at PSU, at the George Sister Museum of Art. Um, and I think knowing how important and impactful your work with, I really was just trying to follow your lead as closely as possible. I felt completely supported by the staff here. So um, I didn't get to work with Ale 
but I felt like we were, were on the same team at opposite sides to like, if I did my job right, they would just look at your prints and really, um, you know, as a painter, I'm used to painting a uh, world beyond capitalism. And I think, you know, it's such a joy to live in the world or the words that you collected, Nudia, because as I painted them, I think I was able to be present more with the words. And uh, I mean, you know, I had to paint them, I had to do a good job, but I think the immensity of your project really, I think, revealed itself to me as I went through the words and and um, that hope that you carry for the world to use its imagination to uh, think of other things than war to organize us. Um, you know, and I think after listening to Alberto kind of set context for your work, I think it can happen, friend. I'm very cynical. You know, I'm lost in Portland, very far away from my village in Chanquitiro, and I've seen how much, you know, colonialism and extraction culture and capitalism through migration, you know, my village is dead. Um, and I see the dynamics and the politics and the forces that drove the indigenous people from my village north to California continue. Um, and as I painted your murals, Nuria, I think I, I really felt like in the presence of like a, a, a greater power, which is the power that we find in community through the stories that we share. And, and I was thinking about how horrible Porfirio Diaz was because he just really, that's really ugly style. You know, it's like secondhand, like Beaux-Arts, like, like, like so, bleh, right? So boring. Um, <laughs> you know, because I know how beautiful Mexicans are. I know how rich and diverse are, right? I think, yeah, we, we love French culture too, but you know, like we're we're much more rich and diverse than I think the world recognizes. And I think in the way that you collect the words and the stories, I see the Mexican culture that's hidden in popular media and popular history about Mexico. Um, and really the, the main thing was they're very different murals, Nuria. And so as we worked, I wanted to make sure that you know, because when you walk into the space, like you're not doing a lot of thinking, you're immediately engaged by the prints and the words. So um, I knew that uh, it was important to not make them look the same. Uh, and, you know, I'm a professional art handler by trade. So I was trying to fuse really getting out of the way of the work as much as possible. So again, working with the staff here, uh, I had plenty of time and, you know, I, I, I love that we were uh, WhatsApping back and forth the whole time, um, you know, but it felt like you were here with us in, in a way. And I think having you here in Portland over the summer made it more human. And I think for me, just as an artist and painter, I was trying to make it as human as possible, especially I think with with the um, uh, people lo llevaron. I think it was really important that people have a sense that a human is behind this in a way that the color one is a mix of like our indigenous ancestors, our colonizing like heritage, and then this beautiful street culture that your work captures. The colors especially, Nuria, I, I just fell in love with. Um, and I think it made me look back at your prints in a new way. So thank you, friend. It's It's an honor to work with you and for you. And uh, I want to live in your imagination. And it's really fun to go, come into the museum and completely get surrounded by your vibe. So I, I wish you had the opportunity to see the show. It's really beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> Did that answer you? I hope that answered your question. Yeah, completely. Yeah. I, yeah, it was great and even more. So so yeah, I think, um, it gave, I and I think you also did, I mean, I wish I could see it directly to see these differences, no, of how like in the, in the Rastro de Todas las Voces, you have more like the handmade letter, and here you really put, put the masking tape or the tape to make it more sharp, so I feel that that, that was important, no, to make these differences, 
And in the like the Wonder Words, I didn't mention maybe like how I did this, like how this piece came out. I was doing a residency at Hyde Park Art Center. That it's an amazing community museum in the south side of Chicago. You were living in, in Chicago, B, right? So maybe you visited. Yeah, for grad school. Yeah, and I love that neighborhood. Yeah, historically black neighborhood. Yes. Yeah, and, and this, this museum, it, it, when I went, it, it had an amazing team. So I was traveling first time with the project of the mobile printing press. Well, it was the second time, but for this one, I designed the letters instead of using like a letter, all like letters from letter presses, all letter presses. I decided to make my own ones with the laser cut and, and the CNN. And I was using a font that is true V that it looks like very much like this Neo Mayan typefaces that if you go to, to Merida, you will see them in certain parks and in the architecture, but they are also very similar to a type font from the Bauhaus, a designer from the Bauhaus school. So this mix, like, you know, like Chicago, it's a lot about Bauhaus. You see a lot of Bauhaus buildings, and, but it's also a lot of me Mexican culture too, and black culture. So in a way, like the design did this match, you know, where you have the influence or, or the cultural appropriations or the cultural, um, mixes between Occidental art and Mesoamerican art. And, and also it has like this greedy matrix that speaks about the grid of like Chicago in particular, that it's totally like the blocks are really squares, but it makes a lot to, also makes me think a lot in the grid of computer systems, but also like later on, about like the weaving, you know, the structure of the grid is so, still so like strong with us, no? So, and I was basically visiting different groups, like some of them, they were educators, others were like urban farmers, activists, and Ayotzinapa appears there because this like print was done exactly the same year that the students uh, disappeared and um, basically by the state and by uh, the corruption of the government with like the cartels and all of that. So I think at the very end it's a homage for to the Ayotzinapa students. It's not obvious and you don't see it immediately, but maybe you will be able to read that you can find the Convida Tamales and Ayotzinapa is there and there. So you have to really search for those words, but people were adding, no? So all of them were done collectively, no? As 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 like the, the Portland version, but more in this greedy structure. And I don't know if, if Alberto would like to say something before we talk about the students a piece that I think it was also a very, very, very important part of the show since the beginning. And because I couldn't go back to Portland because the visa hasn't arrived yet and it's taking so long, maybe it won't come anymore, I don't know. I'm like, kind of, what? But because of that, I think there were things that happened in a like in a good way too. Like since like since I was living in Chicago, I wanted to do some pieces that could be done between a community that is living in United States and a community that is living in Mexico. Mm. And I have I didn't have the chance to do it. So when we thought about this show, the workshop was gonna happen with the students of PSU, and that was the main idea, no? that we could have the printing press, uh, the mobile press like going on with the students and that we could open this possibility of collective printmaking and stuff like that. But when we ended with, when the possibility of not being 
able to travel to Portland. So in certain moments in the conversations, we thought, what if we, as I'm in Portland doing a residency and I'm going back to teach it with uh, printmaking and art in here in Cholula, in the university, Woodlab, I was like, could we do a piece that could be like this idea of prints that gather us and it's a collective voice, but for, for of two different groups of students having a strange kind of conversation through printmaking. And it ended up being that, no? And can you speak a little bit, Alberto, because you were involved in all the yeah. daily life process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm just double checking with Mariana because I think we're running a little bit over time, but it is the final piece that closes the exhibition in many ways. So as you mentioned, uh, I think it, it very much speaks to the themes of the exhibition, how your work brings different communities together despite political regimes or state structures that prevent those links. So originally the plan was you would do all of this workshops with PSU students, so it would be a reactivation of the mobile press in many ways, but thinking that maybe your visa might not arrive, we played with this idea of your students at the Universidad de las Americas in Puebla, creating all of these different prints that speak to how they navigate their environment, the things that they're thinking about the future, helping you then gather all those prints that were then FedEx to us. And then students here at PSU working in uh, Kat Pritchard's printmaking class, the students were able to see the works that the students from Cholula produced. They were able to add layers to many of the works that they had them produce. And so the final piece of the exhibition, and since it was just installed yesterday, we don't have a photo of it, but everyone who's coming to the open, to the open where it's a teaser that you have to come to the museum to actually see it. Um, all of the pieces then were collected. And so it's this amazing dialogue and using a lot of the same paper that you use in some of the other works that you did with Mulaney printing. There's a lot of transparencies where you see on one piece of paper, it's hard to tell what part is by PSU students, what part is by Universidad de las Americas students. So as then your other pieces in which you collect different words and different statements is this record of a sort of all of these different transnational conversations that are happening with students. So I thought it was um, it was a project or a work born out of necessity in many ways because of this. I, it's, it's just really, uh, it gets to me like, oh yeah, sure, you're approved and you'll get the visa one day, even though they already, even though you already went through the entire painful, difficult process of getting an appointment at the consulate where they ask you all of this invasive questions about you and your life. And then you're just left hanging. Uh, but I've, it's an amazing piece. I'm sure now that the piece has been finished, we'll have documentation of it at the museum. But it is a great opportunity to then, I think it's a, a great record of your strategies and how your work is so much about. We're in this really, really difficult moment in so many ways, politically, culturally. But your work is all about finding hope and finding possibilities for the future, despite all of that. Um, as V mentioned as well, um, the way that we're describing it was was making me a little bit teary-eyed because I'm just thinking about water running out in my hometown in Mexico and all of those different things. There's just so many different things. And sorry, again, Mariana, I don't want to overstep the time, but. I think we're done. Thank you yeah. so much. Yes, thank you all so much, uh, Alberto V. Alejandra. I'm, you know, so grateful for you all joining us. Um, Nuria, we are just so, so grateful to have your talent and uh, the work that you've shared with us and your positive attitude as well. I think um, I will say, you know, working with everyone here on this panel, um, it's just been a very joyful experience with just very kind people. In addition to amazing artists, people are, just, you know, all of you have just been really lovely to work with. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. thank you, thank so, you much. so much. Yeah. I have to say thank you for like all the support that you gave me and all the team of like the, um, of the museum that all the openness and the, the freedom that you gave me and the trust that even that I couldn't go that we continue with the project 
Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I think I've learned a lot in the process. Um, sending a lot of hugs to everyone that is behind the screen. Thank you, Nuria. And we'll send you lots of pictures of the opening as well. So keep your WhatsApp open. <laughs> <laughs> no? All right. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, Nuria, um, thank you. Alejandra V. Alberto, I will see you in just a few minutes outside in the galleries. And I invite everyone in our classroom to also come out to the galleries. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much. And I hope everyone has a wonderful night.